Welcome to the Transformational Storyteller Podcast. The stories we tell ourselves and others shape the lives we lead. I'm your host, Dara Lee Lyons. She has a lot to offer in the way of um, hope and healing and light. And she is funny and irreverent. And she wrote an amazing book called Vagina Strong, uh, which we'll be talking with her about. Um, this is Cecily Alexandria, and she's going to tell us a story. So I grew up with um, two older brothers my mom and my dad, um, and we were a very um, like conservative, church-going family. Um, we were uh, Pentecostal, so we went to church all the time, like at least four times a week, if not seven. Um, so it was a very, um, in some ways, a strict um, upbringing. Um, there is love there in the house um, to a certain degree, um, not necessarily between my parents, but um, I know that they loved us. So um, just growing up in a house and in a community that was very um, conservative, um, it was a black, black traditional church, but it was still there's a lot of rules and regulations and if you don't do certain things like you are probably going to go to hell um, you're disappointing god and you know you're a pretty bad person so i internalized that throughout my entire life and i um just in my 30s realized that i don't want to internalize that anymore. Um, and so I thought that writing a book would be a way of, in some ways, healing myself and allowing other people to um, possibly heal from it as well. Um, so I wrote the book and um, I still have faith in all the things and um, my my story doesn't change because I've changed towards the end, but I have a lot to learn from um, from my past. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, I think growing up, um, growing up in a very conservative um, community. Um, brings a lot, a lot of story to tell, so. So super grateful to have the author of Vagina Strong on today talking about her book, her life, and her brand. And speaking of strong brands, just Strong, the lifestyle brand, uh, clothing brand for women, is sponsoring this segment of the podcast. And um, they are a brand about resilience and tapping into your strength as a human being and as a woman. And their logo is the squat because they say that once you get down, the real power comes from being able to get back up. And so if you would like to take advantage of 10% off as a listener or a viewer of this podcast, go to www.juststrong.com and enter the coupon code DARALEASE10 for 10% off at checkout. Cecily, thank you again so much for being here today and having the courage to tell your story, not just on this podcast, but also in your incredible book, uh, Vagina Strong. It's incredible. 
Thanks. Um, so I was really curious because the story that you've chosen to share in this podcast so far was about growing up in a very religious background. And yet your book, the subject matter of your book, um, is one that I wouldn't necessarily have expected from someone with your background. So can you talk a little bit about the subject of your book and what made you choose to write it? Um, you know, yeah. Um, the Gina Strong um, Faith, Sex, and Life Through the Journey of a Virgin. Yeah. Um, I think it kind of goes with the all three of those kind of come to what Vagina Strong is yes. um, for me. I, um, growing up in that, in a very religious um, thing, sex was not an, was not an open conversation and it wasn't a positive conversation. Right. So there was a lot of, um, a lot of, um, questions and things that kind of came yeah yeah come up in those things so I associate in some ways sex and religion um like together yeah to a certain yeah. degree so it doesn't the in some ways vagina strong is a little misleading um well, just because I, it's not um it's not straight like sex in a in the way that I think society expects you to talk about sex, I guess. Right. Well, and yet I felt like, you know, I think that there is a link for many of us. I did not grow up in a religious background. Um, you know, my mother wasn't even married when she had me, right? So like <laughs> polar opposites. Mm -hmm. But um but in reading your book, like the shame that you spoke about. Like, mm -hmm. I think that is somewhat of a universal thing that a lot of us, for different reasons, yeah. bring to sex, love, dating, relationships, mm -hmm. you know? And, and just your bravery in talking about and just shining light on a lot of things that could potentially be shameful subjects. And, right. Yeah. And... You, you know, you write about this in the book. I know this just from interacting with you, but like there's, you have a certain like a, a shyness mm -hmm. about you and an yeah. introversion. So what was it like to really put yourself out there? It was terrible. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was not, I, there was a certain urgency in, within me to, yeah. that um, generally I don't feel like my voice is heard. Um, because I'm shy and I'm not um, super, I'm not, especially even being a comedian, like I'm not an extrovert. I, yes. I get on stage and I do what I do, but afterwards I'm not really like, hey, let's talk, let's be friends. Yeah. Like, so I don't have that personality, but I feel in general that my voice just isn't always heard. And at some point um, a couple of years ago, I was just like, I need my voice to be heard. And so I started writing. Um, but with that, um, the things that I was talking about in my, as I was writing um, also felt shameful, even though I was like trying to purge myself so that the shame would go away, yeah. like allowing other people to, to hear hear my voice felt shameful yeah. um but so the process was really really difficult for me I didn't want to hurt feelings and um and paint such a negative um negative picture of all the things that yeah. are in some ways negative to me but aren't but like you can you can still love like yeah. I can I can love my family even when things weren't great well, so I feel like you do a really good job of telling your part of your family story like right. and that's something you know I'm 
working on a memoir project at the moment and my family like has a lot of feelings about some of the things that I say uh, because I do not do as good a job of you <laughs> as you of focusing on just your part of the story and um, but it was really especially when you write about your father mm -hmm. you know um, like you're very kind and very gentle yeah. in your treatment of him and also you know you own that there's an imp like that these people had an impact on you and that you're mm -hmm. still kind of like working on that impact within yourself and I really appreciate the way that you did that thank you no thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you um and uh you know I also you spoke about there being an urgency for you in mm -hmm. telling the story and one of the things if you haven't yet read Cecily's book but I hope you will I hope after listening to this podcast seeing this podcast you will buy a copy and um and read it but like one of the things that I was I was super excited about in this book is that uh, you kind of go on this journey of like exploring what it means to be a virgin and whether or not you even want to continue to be a virgin mm -hmm. or whether you know you want to change that. And so part of this book is like the mystery of well, like, <laughs> will she? Won't she? You know what's going to happen? Who's it going to be? Yeah. And so like. Did you know going into the book, like, was that a driving force behind it? Or did at some point you make the decision that, okay, I'm, you know, I might, I might not be a virgin at the end of, of having written this book? I definitely, when I started writing the book, was on a mission to not be a virgin by the end of the book. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At the okay. time, that was, that was my yeah. um, goal. I guess. Right, right, yes. I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was definitely um, a starting point for okay. um, even the reason why I was writing the book because I was so frustrated in yeah. in the whole the whole process. Well, so. right, and I mean, you talk in the book about like feeling like you know, that, that like super imposition of like the religiosity aspect of some of your choices around sex and dating and relationships, right? Like feeling almost like this sense of cultural oppression or something and, and, and trying to figure out like what your true value system is mm -hmm. in the midst of all of these, these things that had been put onto you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I definitely was working through a lot of yeah. <laughs> working through some things, but I think, I think in general, like a lot of people at some point come to a, a head of like what they experienced as children and what they, what they now want to be as adults. And so there's, I think there's a lot of conflict um, yeah. that people generally go through. Um, so I just wrote it out. Yeah, <laughs> no, I think there's definitely a lot of conflicts, and, and we all have conflicts around different things, mm -hmm. you know? And one of the things that was really striking to me is your relationship with your mother, like that you are very close with her. And yet, at the same time, like, part of what you were looking to do and maybe still are looking to do is to figure out kind of where her values end and where yours begin. Right. And so what is that like to be really close with someone and love them and at the same time feel like, you know what, I, I don't want to live my life according to your rules anymore. So, what, like, what has that been like for you? Um... It's definitely a process. I currently live with my mom. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's um, that just, there's a lot there. Yeah. Um, but we are, she's my, she's my mom best friend is yes. what I call yes. her. Yeah. Um, I have other friends and things, but, um, but yeah, it's in some ways she is very open to hearing how I feel and how I'm thinking and yeah. all that, whether she agrees or not. So that's helpful. Yeah. Um, and so there's not so much of a conflict 
between the two of us, it's just, it's more of a inner conflict of figuring out, um, like, is this what, is this what I believe or is this what, like you were just saying, like, is it what I just, just fallen in line with? Um, and it's not just her, her beliefs, it's kind of everybody together. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, and you said, you know, in your opening um, statement, the story that you told, you shared about being in church like between four and seven days a week, right? Yeah. So that's like, <laughs> that is a lot of it's, other people's belief system yeah. that gets kind of filtered in mm-hmm. to you and then teasing out like, well, what, you know, what is real to me what is yeah. cultural you know right. conditioning and yeah, stuff like that. yeah um I definitely took in the church voice from a very early age so yeah. it the church voice is actually more of what I'm like trying to separate out yeah. as an adult um because that's a that is a lot a lot of church like that's a lot of anything four to seven days a week of anything and yeah. I'm like you were gonna you know I mean you think about it like with exercise right mm-hmm. like you do four to seven days a week or something like you get you get conditioned in yeah. a certain way right, right. and right it's, spir- it's religious exercise it's mm-hmm. mind exercise or whatever yeah. it's like a form of education and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that necessarily but like it it just I think it does make it hard to assert or to try to change your values and and I heard a lot of that in this book as you were really going through like you know trying to lose your virginity and figuring out what you know who who to lose it to and that kind of thing like I I felt like there was like very much an internal struggle a push pull between the past and the present right yeah 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 <laughs> um so, and you are a stand-up comedian, right? So how much do these themes feature in that work? I don't really um, talk about sex very much in uh, my stand-up. I, I tried to talk about being a virgin, like, for a very short period of time. Okay. Like, I just tried it, and the audience gets very uncomfortable when I say it. Yeah. When I actually say I'm a virgin, okay. they kind of don't know what to do with it. <laughs> so I actually, with one of my jokes, I had to change my line to cel- I'm celibate. Got it. So yeah. there, for whatever reason, like people could get onto yeah, like being sure. a part of that joke that they couldn't get on to like I'm a virgin. Right. So um, it's very, um, it's just an interesting thing. But I do talk about, um, I talk a little bit about, um, a little bit about dating, okay. online dating, yeah, and things like that. But I don't really talk about sex or. Um, that kind of stuff on stage because it just doesn't always work very well. And I also have like a lot of other things to talk about. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, the funny thing is though, is that the reverse is so like, I, so I am not a virgin, um, you know, and, and, uh, and whenever I've like spoken about some of my like, you know, ridiculous and hysterical myriad of sex and dating stories, like, I feel like people are all too eager to hear about the reverse. So it's, it's like, weird. I don't know what that is culturally, that there's, like, this discomfort with virginity, but this, like, sort of, like, sort of, like, incredible comfort with, like, the sluttiness that, you know what I mean? <laughs> or, or I don't even want to put that yeah. label on it. But, right. like, um, but just the sexual like misadventures, right? Mm-hmm. Like, right. so I don't know, I don't know why that is, but do you have a sense of like why that would be? Um, I don't, I'm not exactly sure. Like yeah. I, it might be a 
something that is a little I I really honestly don't, I don't know, know either. because <laughs> like there's it's like for me my virginity was like in a certain way like shameful. Yeah. And for other people who have had so many as you say right, misadventures right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like that's, that's shameful, shameful to, yeah. To right. a, yeah. That might be shameful for someone else. So we're well, both and for me, but like I laugh at my shame, right? I think, right. which I think as a comedian, you can probably relate to. And right. even in your book, like it was super humorous, these things that you were talking about. Like it's like witty and irreverent, but also at the same time, like I do get that these are issues that you very much do struggle with. I mean, right. you mentioned seeing a therapist. I too have a therapist. Like I think mm -hmm. it's important to get help in dealing with whatever it is that might cause us a certain yeah. amount of shame or the things that we're looking to change that because of internalized messages are a little hard, harder to change. Yeah. It might be, I mean, I'm really going off the top of my head, yeah. so I don't, yeah. I have no idea, but it might just be that sometimes it's hard to really relate if you aren't coming from the same yeah. space so yeah. maybe people are just like I don't yeah or they just don't believe me like that's really <laughs> that's probably it yeah, maybe they're like they you're me. in your 30s oh, I don't gosh. believe you at all well the funny <laughs> thing is though as you said you know it might be hard to relate I related to almost every word in your book right and I you know I grew up with um, no sense of religiosity, no church. I mean, I never heard my mom pray once in my entire childhood. Um, you know, didn't grow up with any sort of like values. I mean, the, the only value system I got around sex was like, well, uh, you know, don't have sex with someone too early because then they won't like or respect you. Like that mm. was, that was like the only thing I was told and I didn't follow that, you know? <laughs> and then, um, well, that was it. Like, and there was no God and there was no, you know, none of that. But, but every, everything in your book I related so deeply to because you were talking about the feelings underneath the actions. Right. And like every one of your feelings spoke to me and I think would speak to, you know, anyone who picks up your book. Um, and I, I think the emphasis on strength mm -hmm. is really important. So I was wondering if you could maybe speak a little bit about that. Um, the idea of vagina strong. Yeah, this, and the um, strength, yeah. Um, I mean, I think there's like the saying, in weakness there's strength and stuff like that. Like, yeah. that's, that's real Christian-y. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> there's, um, I think we all have a form of strength. Um, and, um, it's just finding it and, and like you said, like exercising it. Yes. So, um, I, I am finding my strength, you know, day by day. It's not every day is different and some days it's harder and other days it's like, yeah, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 <laughs> Um, so, and the, the name actually came from being silly with my sister-in-law. I okay. was just like, um, I felt like my, I was on a bumpy airplane and I felt like my insides were going to fall out my vagina yep. and she was like, <laughs> vagina strong. And I was like, that's great. I'm using it. <laughs> so like it my, really... my insides are going to fall out my vagina. I feel like that once a month, every month. So you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But... Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, um, so Cecily, I, I'm, I don't want to give any spoilers because I want to make people <laughs> buy a copy of the book and buy find out, book. yeah, yeah. Buy a copy of the book. <laughs> um, you know, and find out whether or not, like, like what does end up happening. Um, mm -hmm. But I will say that at the end of the book, you were not in a committed monogamous relationship. I feel like I can share that without giving anything away. <laughs> um, 
So, but are you still, are you dating these days? Like, what's, what's, what's that like? I'm going to put you on blast and just kind of, well, yeah. You mentioned the online dating thing, but yeah, like, I mean, are you, are you, yeah, are you putting yourself out there in that way? I was not expecting you that You were question. not expecting that question. I feel yeah, like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, so online dating is yes. a struggle bus for me. So I go on and off of it. Yep. Like all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So currently I'm off. I'm okay. not online dating. Um, and then there's, uh, there's a person um, it, so and that's, that's a what, thing. Yeah, yeah. like, okay, it's cool. like this yeah, yeah. weird yeah. thing of like, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Such well, a weird, yeah, yeah. I know, right? whenever, yeah. whenever, like, I feel like when people talk about their relationships and it's like super, it's super, um, defined. Yeah. It's so easy and then there's like when it's kind of not you're not fully there you're just like well that's that's (laughs) actually interesting that you bring that up because that's how I feel about a lot of the things the themes in your book Mm -hmm. like are that you're looking to not be super defined in the ways that you were forced to be defined for most of your life like are you a, you know, are you a good girl? Are you a Christian girl? Are you right. a, you know, are you a virgin? Are you a this? Are you a that? Like, mm-hmm. and I feel like that's so emblematic of just your quest in mm-hmm. this world is like, can I exist in the space between extremes? Can I right. sort of be part of the world as a human person? I mean, that's in your bio. <laughs> you know, you call yourself, what do you say? You say, um... Uh, Cicely, Cecily Alexandria is a comedian, writer, actor, producer, human person, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I love that you also say you've always wanted to punch people in the face from a young age um, mm-hmm. in your bio because, yeah, like, who doesn't, you know? Um, I just didn't want people to think that I came to Philly and that's where I started wanting to punch people in the right, face. Right, right, like, yeah. No. I've been... <laughs> Yeah. I've been bawling my fist for, yeah. I haven't actually punched anybody in the face, yeah. just so right, we're right. all clear. Yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm not violent in that yes. way. <laughs> uh. Even in Ohio, you can grow up in church in Ohio and, and still, still want to punch yes. people in the face. <laughs> and I really like that too about your book because you speak about like your inner impulses and mm. shaming yourself for your feelings Mm -hmm. and your impulses. And I relate a lot, you know, you spoke about sort of having like a pseudo girl crush at Mm -hmm. one point and that's in the book and like, you know, beating yourself up for that. And it's like, oh my God, we assassinate ourselves for Mm -hmm. our thoughts and feelings, not just our actions. And so, um, yeah, you know, so much good stuff. I don't want to have too many spoilers about about it, but I I, I do want to let people know kind of like where to find you and your work and where to get exposed to you. So yeah, for people who are listening or watching, where can they connect with you? Um, I have a website. It's cecilyalexandria.com. And I do stand up um, at festivals and all kinds of places. Um, so even if you're not in Philly, you might find me somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, um, I am a writer. Yeah. And I looked at, you've got a blog, you've got a book, um, any plans for a future book in the works? Yeah. I'm, I'm currently writing another book. Um, it is, I'm sorry, not Vagina Strong 2. Um, <laughs> so, sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, can you tell like a little bit about the theme of this one? Um, it's about being black and fat. So, it's still going to be more, more diving into, into, your into things that um, are uncomfortable. I think I just like 
diving. I don't. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> be like take people with you down into the discomfort yeah. of being a human person in this world. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, and speaking of uncomfortable, I'm going to put you on the spot yet again with yet (laughs) another uncomfortable (laughs) question. But um, so this podcast is about transforming through story, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the things like every good story has is some sort of theme or moral or lesson. And so, you know, if you could offer a theme or moral or lesson from your life that you feel like is a driving theme behind your narrative? Like, what what would that be for you that you would want to kind of share with people? Um, yeah, you did put me on the spot. I did. Again. I, I warned you. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. um, I guess what I'm finding for myself right now is um, that it's important for us to be kind to ourselves. And um, so even with all of our all of our crap, we should still be kind to ourselves. Um, and that helps us be kind to others and be light to others. So I have it written on my arm um, to remind myself of being uh, kind to be myself. Kind to <laughs> Um, and even in dealing with the, the hard things, um, there should be space to yeah. like allow, allow yourself to, um, to feel and to understand that you are human. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to make mistakes. You're not going to be perfect and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. I love that. And for anybody who's listening and can't see um Cecily just pulled out her uh on her left arm she has a tattoo and it says Cecily be kind to yourself and I think what's like super interesting and symbolic for me about getting a tattoo like that is painful right Mm -hmm. like to actually go through the process of getting that imprinted on yourself is painful um but like for me too it's the experiences that have been most painful to my life are the ones that I need to draw on in Mm. order to remember that I deserve love and kindness. And so I really, I really love that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. I, um, I hope people will definitely connect with you on Mm cecilyalexandria.com on your website and will buy copies, many, many copies of your book because who doesn't need to harness their inner vaginal strength, you know? <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and just like your willingness to go to the uncomfortable places and to reside there is really pretty powerful. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, so much. Yeah. So glad to have Cecily Alexandra here talking about Vagina Strong and I highly, highly recommend that you read this book. And to that end, we have put a link in the show notes to go on Amazon and buy the book. Uh, And uh, if you would use the link in the show notes, that would be really great because it'll help uh, support this podcast. And um, yeah, happy reading and happy strong vaginas. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Transformational Storyteller Podcast. As always, thanks to our sponsors, Loving Healing Press and Just Strong, our production team at Rebel Hill Consulting, and of course, many thanks to you, the listener. Whoever you are, wherever you are, I hope you're creating stories that empower you and inspire others.